Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. Today, we are checking in the new Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Core Set from Paizo, the people behind the Pathfinder role-playing game and all the other Pathfinder licenses out there. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Normally, answering your gaming and game night questions while striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. If you head over to tabletopbellhop.com, you can see our website where you can see unboxing videos like this, all kinds of other stuff, including actual plays, reviews, uh, weekend reviews, looks at the games I've been playing recently, and answers to your gaming questions. So that's our big drive. We want to be here for you. We want to be a dear Abby for gamers, and we want to answer your game questions. You can send those questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com, or if you're at tabletopbellhop.com, just click on Ask the Bellhop. You can find answers to other people's questions on there, like what are the best two-player games for date night? All right, enough about me. Make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button, though, to get notified the next time I go live. All right, we are going to take a look at the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Core Set today. It's our cardboard code check. we got to take a look at what's in this box before I can put it in my game collection. This is the new printing, the new version that just came out. Um, along with the Pathfinder 2nd Edition release. I do have to thank Paizo Publishing for contacting me and offering a review copy of this game. No other compensation was provided. So I'm going to start off by cutting off the shrink on this, then I'll read you off the back of the box so you know what you're getting into. And then we're going to take a look inside. I have to assume, being a non-collectible card game, that this box is significantly bigger than it needs to be in order to fit expansion material. Speaking of which, I will be doing another unboxing video of the first expansion box for the set, so watch for that on YouTube as well. So, we have the core set here. Your adventure begins here. Belhaim's tower has collapsed. Its wizard is missing, and kobolds are whispering the name of a long-dead draconic nemesis. And it's just your first day in town. This complete cooperative strategy game fits one to four players against monsters, perils, and traps as you become the heroes of Belheim. As the town's new champions, you will find an unending world of adventure awaits. Choose your character's class, build a deck of equipment, magic, and allies, and explore lethal locations as you journey through an exciting fantasy tale. As your adventures continue, your character add remarkable gear and breathtaking magic to their decks and they gain incredible powers all of which they'll need to challenge more and more powerful threats sounds like a role-playing game to me this set includes the storybook and cards for the dragon's demand adventure path as well as a module core for infinite scenarios that allows you to control the difficulty and speed of play uh, it has a list of what it includes, but we're going to go through that and take a look. So I'm not going to bother covering that. It does note 1 to 4 players, age 13 plus. Uh, playing time says 90 minutes, which isn't bad. So it is a significantly large box, but not overly heavy. Lid is not coming off easily. And this is where Sean, my editor, speeds up the video. Finally. All right, so we have, there's an Adventure Card Society. Interesting. So they did Pathfinder Society for it. We have an ad for the first expansion, Curse of the King's Crimson Throne. We have Become a Legend, which is all about playing the full Pathfinder RPG. And we have Continue the Battle, showing an Ultimate Magic expansion for this. But we're not worried about that. We're worried about what's in this set. But it includes, first of all, a quick start guide, which is not just one page. We have a four player, four page, lots of text, almost no picture, quick start guide, and charts. Now I feel like I'm playing an old school RPG all of a sudden. So what are these charts? It's a list of the decks. So it's what cards go in your starting decks. All right. There's no D100 chart or anything here. Um, text a little small, but not terrible. It's surprising with how... You know, this is Pathfinder Fantasy that there's so little art in this quick start guide. You figure they'd want people to, like, jump into the feel. Like, look at the cover of this, right? Versus the cover of the quick start. It just needed this and say quick start guide, and it just feel more immersive. I think that's a missed opportunity. So, out of, I've unboxed quite a few games in the last couple days. None of them have rule books this thick. This is not 
a light, pick it up, you're going to start playing anyway. We're looking at 29 pages, 28, take off the, the cover. Yeah, take off the cover. 28 pages with a rule reference on the back. This is not a small book. Now, compared to the Pathfinder rule book, which is, I don't even know, 900 pages. This seems pretty simple, right? All right, we have a table of contents. You've got lots and lots of text, how to lay things out. This is not a game you're going to pick up, bring home, and start playing the same night you got it. There is a lot of reading required before you get going. It does look like there's lots of examples. Nice callouts. The callouts are color coded. I don't know what the color coding means, but it's nice to see those are color coded. Oh yeah. And like I said for Pathfinder, there's art, but there's not a lot of art in here. Like look at that. We got two full pages with just a little bit of flourish there. I would have expected something a little more immersive, a little more colorful. Wow. Yeah, this I'm I'm gonna bring this one to a coffee shop. Have a few coffees and read through it. Look at all the information just on the cards. Whew. All right, I'm going to speed this up. You don't need to see every page this quick. It all looks about the same. Lots and lots of text. Not as many pictures as I would expect. There's some suggested decks. Yeah, wow. 30 pages for a deck builder. That's a chunk of text. Then we have the storybook, The Dragon's Demand. So this would be the individual adventure. So that was just how to play. Then you have the individual adventure. I don't know if I want to spoil anything. So to be honest here, you know what? I'm going to take a quick look. Okay, this has more of the art and the fluff I was looking for in the main book. So you got some stuff in the beginning. I'm just going to flip to a random scenario here. You got a nice piece of artwork. There's some fluff, some introduction. And then your actual setup instructions. We have scenario 3C. So there are three adventures in here. And it looks like they branch, I would hope. Because they say 2AB. I don't want to take the time to read through this. But there are all multiple parts. And they may actually branch. So it looks pretty solid. I gotta admit, I love Pathfinder artwork. So We have standees. I would have preferred minis. I think everyone would prefer minis, but I get it. Standees. Pathfinder has always been pushing their standees. You can get standees for all their adventure paths, which is impressive because if you're going to run a, uh, a an adventure by them, you can literally buy every monster, every character in standee form, which you couldn't afford to do. You have tokens that, I got to admit, are boring. Like, look at those. Blue waves, yellow things, green. Hero points, one on the back. Character art's nice. It's the same picture on both sides. You don't get the back of the character on the back of the standee. There's an awful lot of these. Like, what, a purple with yellow dots. I have no clue. Hero points one and two. Now, maybe these represent status effects. I'm not sure. And then we have pretty much what I expect. A lot of blank space. That's a lot. That's even more than I expected. There are not a lot of cards in this box compared to the size of the box. Though I get it, they are going to put out at least one advance or path a year for this game, if not more than that. What you do get, though, is a full set of RPG polyhedrals. Oh, not a full set. A subset. No D20. So we have a game based on the D20 role-playing system that doesn't actually include a D20. No, if it's not obvious at this point, I have not played the original Pathfinder Adventure card game. I have friends that played through every single one. Alright, so we have almost a full set of D&D polyhedrals. Nice blue. They're nice dice. They got some nice weight to them. Well made dice. It's odd that like, I'm surprised they didn't just throw in a D20 just because. I'm going to throw those in the middle. Alright, unboxing a card game. Never the best thing to do we obviously have dividers that are nice see there's the art right that's that's what i wanted to see more of in the thing so we have a lot of dividers we're going to crack these open and i am not going to show you all of them but like there's the art right that's pathfinder look at that tavern full of characters 
So character one, two, three, four, all have the same art on them. <laughs> Removed from game. So obviously there's going to be a legacy aspect to this, right? As the campaign goes on, some cards are going to be removed from the game. We have blessings. Gotta love Paizo's artwork. I gotta say, like, look at that. Allies. And the Jin. Items. Monsters. Come on, a pack of wolves for monsters? They could have done better than that. Still nice art. Uh, proxies. I have no idea. Other support cards. Anyway, these are nice. These are nice and thick too. I I doubt you can really see that, but that's that's thicker than normal card. Maybe twice as thick, not quite. One and a half times the thickness of a normal card. What I do like is look at how high those stick up. That's nice. Compared to the cards in front of them. That's nice, easy to read. I dig that. Now, man, this is going to be a mess. Like, I'm going to go through these... If you give up halfway through and don't want to watch anymore, I get it. Just make sure you hit that uh, follow or like button before you go. Having not read the quick start guide, I don't want to ruin or spoil anything. So I'm just going to grab random cards. There is a lot of text on these cards. A lot. Like there's, I don't know. Check to acquire when this is the hour. Powers, Deity, Divine, Blessings. I don't know. There's a lot of information on each of these cards. I'm just going to grab random ones. Here we have a Scorpion. I'm going to make sure I keep these in the same order, in case that's important. A surprising lack of focus on the art again. Like there is artwork, but there's definitely way more text in there. All looks very functional. This is definitely not your standard deck building game. Like, I don't think a single card in anything DC deck building or Marvel has that much text on it. This definitely looks like you're, you are playing out a full role-playing game with cards. All right, that was one set of cards. I honestly don't know if I should keep going. We're going to throw that in the middle here. See if it's different types of cards. Yeah, that's, oh, that's more armor. You know what? I got to open all these anyway at some point. So They are opening extremely easy. That's nice. There wasn't even a tab to pull there. I just started at the top. All the backs are identical. Yep. So we have some armor. Here's some kind of monster. Story Bane 1. No clue. Like, really. The text is very small. Like, this is a, this is a take my glasses off to play a game. A termite swarm. So here's a monster. Try to get that in focus a bit. There you go. You can see some of the text there. I'm trying to hold my hand steady. There's like a tree in the bottom. We have spells, a holy light spell. Unique artwork for every piece of cards, nice. Just, I, I'm surprised that the, like, some of them have way more focus on the text than the art. Another blessing with a nice butterfly on it. All right, that's another stack. I'm hoping to find, like, a character card, something that looks a little different than these. Yeah, here we go. I see some characters here. So, you may even be writing on cards, which is something I was trying to confirm. There is definitely check boxes on here. I love the name Fimbus. I've always liked goblins in Pathfinder. So here is a goblin character, Fimbus. Let's see if I can get this kind of focus. I don't know what character zero means, zero level. Oh, you camera. You were doing great earlier. There's too much text on this. 
here bring up the whole stack will it work then there we go ah, for a second there you can see there's like check boxes to check off there's a lot of text there you've got Ezrin, Fimbus, Kira, Lem, Miracel, Cilia, Valerios. Oh, now we have rules. So there's, let's see how many characters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. So we have eight characters to pick from. And here's a bunch of rules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rolls. And again, there's hand sizers, there's check boxes. This looks like when you play this game, you are probably it's a, gonna have some legacy aspects. Though I do know you could sleeve the cards and just write on the sleeves. Wow, there's charts here, there's uh, this is something else. This is impressive looking. But not, not a quick pick up and play in any way. So these are locations, and these locations like have all these deck sizes listed. There's a little chart on each one for the deck size for each location. Those are all locations. Um, I don't know what a scourge is, but this guy's got a spot to put a token on. Art's a lot more focused on this, a lot more featured. Oh, here's these proxies. I don't know what proxies are, but there's a henchman proxy. We have a whole bunch of proxies. Wild card zero. Like not having read the rules. Again, more text on this card than there are rules in some games. And we got a bunch more equipment. We got spells. More equipment. I gotta admit, this is intimidating. Like, there, there's a lot going on in this game. This is a big box full of stuff. Open me first. Well, I failed. I failed badly. I'm sorry. Don't open any other cards yet. Oops. So, if you buy this game, start down here. Start in this corner. It's a good thing I kept them in order, I think. <laughs> You know, if I'd read the read me first, that probably been good. All right, here's the yeah. I don't know. Wild card zero. Open me first. Oh, here we have characters again. So I don't know what the difference is between these characters and those characters. All right, I am literally just gonna kind of you guys kind of see what's going on. We have spells. We have allies. You have a dog, puppy. That's a better ally, my opinion. More spells, more items. Lots of stuff, nice artwork. You can have a mouse. Come on, that's cute. All right, we're going to flip through this. We got locations. This is the first deck. I don't even know what I opened with the other stuff. If each of these decks were completely different settings. Who knows? Lots of cards. There you go. That is the ridiculous amount of stuff you get in this box. Though not as ridiculous as the amount of room that is still left in here. Hey, look at that. So start with this deck if you buy this game. That's the only one you're supposed to open. Don't do like me and open everything else first. You, you may regret it. <laughs> we'll see when I go to play the first time. All right. Back to the top. We got some punch outs with characters on them. The book for the scenario. The quick start rules and the ridiculously thick rule book for a co cooperative card game. And the very slow to open and close box. So here you have it. That was the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game core set, the new core set recently released. Um, this this is uh, I gotta admit I'm, I'm I am. Honestly, slightly intimidated by this. A 30-page rule book, a ridiculous number of decks of cards, so much room in this box. But if they keep putting out Adventure Pass like they did previously, it makes sense. If you're digging this game, it's just like playing a, an RPG campaign, right? You're going to keep buying your splat books, you're going to keep buying your stuff, and you're going to want somewhere to put it. And I admit, this is better than having to buy some form of storage solution after I bought the first or second expansion.
So I'm impressed for what I saw, but man, that's a lot of text on those cards. Um, for me, I'm in my 40s. I'm going to spend a lot of time looking at cards like this because that was a lot of small text on a lot of small cards. Um, a little bit disappointed by the lack of fluff in the like the intro, right? To get you involved, to get you into the Pathfinder setting, to get you uh, into that fantasy world. It seemed like that didn't actually start till you get to the campaign, which is probably fine for most players. But the person who's going to teach the game, it just, to me, didn't have that, bam, you're in Pathfinder. You're part of the Pathfinder society. You're going out into the world trying to explore. I expected to see more of that. This seemed much more mechanical and functional, trying to get you to the game as quick as possible. And I gotta say, it's not going to be quick. This is not, you're not going to go to your local game store, pick up a copy of this, bring it home and play that night. This is going to take some prep to learn how to play, just based on what I saw in this box. That said, I'm looking forward to it. It looks cool. Um, me finding a group to play this is going to be interesting. I'm really hoping you don't need the same set of players every adventure. If you do, it might be a while before you see a review for this one. Speaking of reviews, head over to tabletopbellhop.com. You can find reviews, other unboxing videos, actual plays, lists of tabletop gaming podcasts, lists of Twitch streamers, and other awesome, cool gaming stuff. The other place I would love it if you headed is to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and considered tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night, game on.